Hello and welcome to Max8 tutorial number 33, Audio Becomes Video. Well, certainly with an exciting premise like that, I'm sure everyone can't wait to get started here. So I guess the first thing we need is some audio. So let's go and get some. Just over here, we click on the audio. You know, I want uh, jongly. J-O-N-G-L-Y, comes with Max. Um, just drag it out there and you'll get a little audio playlist. And there it is. Oh, I'm zoomed out today. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, there's Jongly. And then let's uh, type L to get a live object. And look at that. It fills right in with gain. That's what we want, a live gain. Yippee. And then we're going to connect our leftmost outlet to the leftmost inlet, and our second to leftmost outlet to the right hand inlet. And then we're going to make an easy DAC. Just type N, type EZ DAC. There it is. And connect. Um, I often mention this, but it's really the left two outlets of. Um, the live gain that you use. So grab that very left one, connect that up, and then the one right next to it. And that goes in the right hand inlet of Easy DAC. And now let's just make sure we've got it. We lock our patch or we turn it on. Oh yeah, and we got it. Okay, enough of that craziness. So that'll give us a good um, strong signal. So what do we use? I'm going to even zoom a little bit more here. Um, we want to turn audio into some sort of video today. And I just thought I'd reveal the object that a lot of people use to start doing that. And it is called catch. It is more appropriately called JIT catch. So type a, unlock your patcher and type a J. You'll get an object with, that starts with JIT dot and then type catch, and you'll see that it has the telltale tilde sign, which means waves. So we want to get old uh, JIT catch up here and get some of those, uh, get the sound going over to the JIT catch. You can run the right and the left in JIT catch there. And then I'm going to put an a TRUI object up here. Type the letter N, A T T R U I, and there. So this is because um, there's a number of ways that you can capture things with um, with a JIT catch, and we are going to use mode three. Now, you could also do that by unlocking your patcher and typing this at mode 3. And that is the same, this is the same as putting a true object on here and putting a 3, whoops, and putting a 3 on there. But just so we can experiment with it later, I have this up here. And I'm not going to get rid of it now that I've gone through all the trouble to get it. Now, what does JIT catch do? Well, it takes the incoming signal and lays it down into um, a JIT matrix. So let's put a JIT matrix down below here so we can take a look at that. Type the letter J. Uh, excuse me, a P window. A P window, that's what I want. And there it is. Just type uh, window you'll get it sooner or later and in this case I'm just gonna well I always do love to use scale but uh, you hold the shift key down and it stays in scale and we'll connect those up now it's not actually going to do anything unless you tell it to output by banging on it with a metro and when you use jitter um, it's safer or I should say necessary to use a Q metro so type the letter N and type Q Metro. 
Um, there's a lot of demands put uh, time-wise in Jitter because they're dealing with so much information that your regular metro might sit around kind of waiting for its turn to go bang, where the Q metro will not wait around, won't sit idly by. It will demand that it gets to go bang. So let's uh, put a toggle on top of that and turn it on. There we go. Okay, so now when we go ahead and hit Jongly, um, I'm going to turn this down a little bit just so it's not quite so distracting. The sound is coming out just as loud for JIT catch. So, it, so JIT catch is changing this into a matrix, so it's sampling it. But what's really happening, I'm going to resize this. Just This is just for a visual so you get the idea of what I'm saying. It's really only changing it into kind of one line like this. And I mean, on, on one level, we've already done exactly what we said we were going to do and made this beautiful thing that changes um, audio into sound. That's fantastic. But trying to use this, let's say, let's say to mix with some video becomes tricky. And since that's probably what we're going to do is we're going to want to be able to look at this and do stuff with it, we have to change it into what it really is right now, which is very one-dimensional. It's like this, but it's stretched out because there's really, in a weird way, only one pixel here. Um, so uh, height-wise, and it's running across this way, I think it's probably about its default is usually 320. So what we're going to do, let's let's uh, first get a, a video up here that we can play with. And what better video um, than, uh, what's it called, Crash Test? So let's drag Crash Test out here, stick it right on up here. We're going to be ready to play it. Um, We'll, uh, st we'll just duplicate this uh, P window and move it over here so we have something to watch. And then I will probably regret turning it on, but here we go. It's a little loud. So here's our... Oh, it's so groovy kind of together, right? It's not that groovy. Okay. Agreed. So we'll just turn that down a little bit. That's, I'm just turning it down on my computer so you don't have to listen to it. So there they are. Now, if we were to run these together as we like to do with the JIT op object, um, let's uh, unlock our patcher, type a J, and say op. Um, I like to get the full control of the old JIT op, so let's, uh, let's just get the JIT op down here and then Option click on it to get the health file, and then go into the multiple operators part. So you've got basic tab, operators tab, multiple operators tab. And I always want to steal this because I like it so much, but I hate having to build it all by myself. So unlock the health patcher, highlight those things, copy them, close your help window, and paste them. Drag them down to your JIT op, and there they are. So now we'll have a uh, JIT catch is outputting to the left hand side of JIT op, and crash test will be outputting to the right side. We'll get ourselves another patcher window down there and see what the output is. So, um, well, let's adjust it and we'll see how it works here. Uh, multiplying them together. You're probably noticing something already. Um, so let's let's try 
doing this, and this it means the exclamation point always means reverse them. I'm going to say, whoops, I mean this one. So this isn't like pass, this is pass the left hand one, and let's put input the right hand one. And I'm not getting anything. Still not getting anything. Still not getting anything. And getting nothing. So I'm getting nothing for um, this particular video. Well, why would that happen? I believe that what's happening is that we have a one-dimensional video going on here, and it's throwing the whole darn thing off. Um, because everything has to interpret the size of the matrix. And if you look down here at the very, very bottom, guess what? This one line down there at the bottom is the only thing we've got. So what I'm trying to get at here is that we need a matrix that actually has height and width. So we're going to make a matrix for JITCatch to uh, dump into. So let's... Um, type letter J here, type matrix, let's name it um, something catchy like catchy, and we will give it four planes, and we're going to use um, float 32. So I know some of this is impossible to remember and you just have to look it up in reference, but float32 is a number that's between 0 and 1 um, that can be, I think it can actually be 32 digits long. Um, we try not to use more memory than we, <clears throat> than we need to, so sometimes we use the char type, which is 0 to 255, but float32 gives us a little more space to work with. And, um, and let's make it uh, 320 by 240, which is the dimensions of the output. So now that we have this beautiful matrix here, what we'll do is reroute this through JIT matrix and reroute this down to our JIT operator. And now, suddenly, we get the, um, the second thing coming in because JITOP is reading the size of this matrix that's outputting into it. So, yeah, so now we have the right size of a, a, a matrix that actually has height and width. And now you'll see when we change these back in here because this is being put out as a 320 and 240 grid that now we can actually have a, a little bit of uh, stuff going on here. Woo! There we go. Check it out. Um, let's uh, do some different stuff with each one of these. Oh, that's just looking great. And how about modulo? There we go. So, um, I'm going to not not too much, but just like rock out in our success here. And that is how you change a little bit of sound right into video using catch. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.